I'm Tom Hanchett. I'm a community historian here in Charlotte. I'm Michael Webb, and I'm a graduate of Johnson C. Smith History Department. And that's significant because we're very near Johnson C. Smith University, um, and we're uh, just west of downtown Charlotte. And we're going to show you around for about 20 minutes, uh, courtesy of Seawalks CLT. This is something the UNC Charlotte Urban Institute does every spring. And we're going to show you this area that is called Biddleville Community. So come on with us. Um, before we do that, um, beautiful building here. This is Mosaic Village. We started here because there's good free parking. And um, the architect is uh, a, a young uh, a fellow named um, Daryl Williams. And Daryl Williams um, called it Mosaic Village because it's, it's all these pieces coming together kind of like Charlotte is. And um, he, he talked about the rhythms of jazz. You can see the rhythms moving down the street. Um, talked about the, the collages of Romar Bearden, famous artist from Charlotte. Um, but the blue and the gold, I bet you those have significance. Must be a representation of good old Johnson C. Smith University. Come on with us. I recognize some places. What do we got here? Well, for one, uh, the first one that sticks out the most would be Biddle Hall. Yeah. Then you have the Grand Theater, which was a very popular movie theater in the central location of Biddleville community. And for entertainment, you had the Excelsior Club, which was a private establishment uh, founded by Jimmy McKee. And let's see, I, I see the old car 85 where uh, that was the last car to run on the streetcar. And then over here is um, what looks like uh, the, the car cars that are coming up. This is filmed in 2021 uh, when they're just starting to test those streetcars. So by the time yeah. you see this, you may be able to ride on a streetcar. And then in the middle, we have Mrs. Johnson C. Smith Memorial Gateway. And that was built in the 20s when Biddle Institute became Johnson C. Smith University, JCSU. So Johnson C. Smith got its start as Biddle Institute. Biddle Institute, and it was founded and established in 1867 by two Presbyterian missionaries from the state of Pennsylvania. Wow. And that's right after slavery times. Yes. And, and, and what they always say was that the, the, the mission was to train preachers and teachers to train leaders. Correct. And over time, they would keep those values, but add on many subjects and other um, terminal degrees as well. As you look through here, you, we can see uh, the, the clock tower of Biddle Institute from way back. Yes. Uh, we can see the, the white columns of the Presbyterian Chapel from the 1920s. And in between is the STEM building, Science, Technology, and Math, the newest building on campus. So yes. this is very much a, a, a living, breathing place. It's, yes. it's not you know, history preserved in amber. Exactly, exactly. For over 150 years, it's still thriving on in the center of the Biddleville community. And you graduated when? In 2013. Uh, what, what was your interest? My interest was in history, and I graduated with honors. And so um, to keep that legacy going, it, I'm very proud of it. So 
and we've got the m and Bank here. And so for 60 years it's been a thriving African-American owned and operated bank here in the center of Biddleville community. Started out in Durham, um, one of the biggest black owned enterprises in the world, affiliated with North Carolina Mutual Insurance, and of course they wanted to be here in Charlotte. Opened in 1962. Wow. it looks let there be light all righty yeah this building when I came to Charlotte I, I came from a part of a uh, United States that had a lot of Victorian architecture very little in Charlotte this was the grandest building yep. uh, in the 1880s and, and into the early 20th century and it had an impact on on the neighborhoods around here as well it did and um, to know that the students who attended this prestigious university also helped build this historic structure that was once the the known highest structure in all of Charlotte. Wow, and it still is kind of a beacon on the hill here. That is correct, yeah. and so with that motto, sit lux, let there be light, this is the light that they were trying to achieve. Cool thing as I've studied neighborhoods around here is that um, there are a lot of very highly educated people who live near Johnson C. Smith, places like Macquarie Heights, uh, Oaklawn Park, uh, Biddleville, Smallwood. All of those neighborhoods have a, a lot of folks that, that had PhDs and doctors of theology. Turns out this trained a lot of ministers who went out all over the South and when they retired, they came home. That is correct. And the institution was a cultivation of what they were trying to achieve through education. And so with it being in the center of Biddleville uh, community and seeing that many of the professionals who lived in the surrounding area all attended and graduated from Johnson C. Smith was just an achievement unto itself during yeah. the time If, if, you, if you wanted your, your kids brought up good, you brought them up near the university. Yes, yes. And Johnson C. Smith was was that guiding light, that guiding force, because it set the tone for many African Americans to attend this university, knowing of its high achievements when it came to the academia world. Uh, it's on the National Register of Historic Places, and this was the, the, the grand centerpiece of this uh, university at a time when no other building in Charlotte was this tall. Pretty amazing. Neoclassical, 1911. Yeah. Um, very different from the Victorian stuff. This is the Carnegie Library. Andrew Carnegie? Andrew Carnegie. The steel man from Pittsburgh took an interest in education, library building, and uh, this is uh, one of the nicest neoclassical buildings that we still have in Charlotte. Definitely. So with Andrew Carnegie, he was a great promoter on education. And so he wanted to spread that by creating these kinds of libraries, not only for the white community, but also for the African American community. And so for this building to still be standing shows his, his reasons of wanting to promote and how dedicated he was on trying to fill that role of education, not only for white America, but also for black America. This is 
the George E. Davis Science Hall building. And George E. Davis was the first African-American professor at JCSU. Um, and uh, we'll see his house in a moment. Uh, I, I love the fact that he taught science, uh, taught athletics, uh, but very much part of this you know, religious university, the George E. Davis Science Hall, science points to God. Let's go see George E. Davis' house. Let's go do that. This is the George E. Davis house. Uh, same guy uh, whose uh, science building we saw across the street. And his wife... Marie G. Davis was also a noted teacher as well here in the Biddleville community. Marie G. Davis Elementary School uh, on the south side of Charlotte, named for her. And uh, Dr. Davis was not just a professor, he, he wore a number of different hats. He did. Not only was he a professor here at Johnson C. Smith, he was also faculty dean here in 1905. And then by the time he retired in 1920, he would then go on to become an agent for Julius Rosenwald for his Rosenwald schools here in North Carolina. And the Rosenwald schools, an amazing public-private partnership, African-American communities, Rosenwald, who uh, was an uh, executive at, at Sears Roebuck, and, and local communities together building, I think, 800 black schools in North Carolina, 5,000. So Biddleville, founded right across Beatty's Ford Road from Johnson C. Smith University, originally Biddle Institute, um, was where people of means in Black Charlotte uh, chose if they, if they wanted their kids brought up near uh, this wonderful educational facility. And your family grew up around here, right? Yeah, my father was born and raised just behind us. And wow. so for him, he always remembers this neighborhood as being the affluent African-American neighborhood where not only professional doctors, lawyers, and teachers were living here, but even people of humble uh, professions um, also lived here and they both commingled together as one. That's cool. One of the, the amazing things that Michael has found is, is this photograph, which we'll, we'll show you up close in a minute. But it, the, the backstory has to do with Robert Smalls, who was a hero of the Civil War. All right, so Robert Smalls, during the Civil War in 1862, eventually takes over the planter along with his wife and child. And, and he's a, a, a boat guy. He he's knows how guy. to run this boat. And when the white folks aren't looking, <laughs> he loads it up with his friends. Correct, and then sails off to the Union side where he becomes very famous and popular for taking over a Confederate battleship. True hero of the Civil True War. True hero. And, and he goes on to serve five terms as a member of Congress in the United States, came back home to coastal South Carolina. In Beaufort, South Carolina, where he would eventually buy his former enslaver's house <laughs> along with his former mistress. Robert Smalls was postmaster down in South Carolina. When he was ready to retire, President Theodore Roosevelt named his daughter named as his the daughter post mistress as the post a woman of color in an important federal job in the early years of the 20th century and she ended up here that's correct once she retired and her children became of age her two daughters uh, got a new position here in charlotte and the first place they decided to live was here in Biddleville community where she lived the remaining years of her life here in this neighborhood at the good old ripe age of 100 years old. Wow. And there is Elizabeth Smalls Bamfield surrounded by her family 
uh, many of them teachers, many of them JCSU graduates, on this porch. So this is the Grand Theater. It was established in 1937. It became the epicenter for the Biddleville community when it came to entertainment, as well as famous plays and movies. Very cool. And it's been uh, apartments for JCSU students for a long time. It's on the National Register of Historic Places, I think. It's definitely a local historic landmark. And so um, we're hoping that as the, the streetcar brings more traffic here, uh, particularly foot traffic, that uh, this will pep up and take on some of the old luster of the old one. That's true. One popular person of note who would attend the Grand Theater was Harry Golden, who is a notable Jewish civil rights leader here in Charlotte. And Harry Golden believed in civil rights so much that as a white guy, he would go to the black guy. Yep. Thumbs up for that. All right, we are Mike Webb, I'm Tom Hanchett. And we're going to see if we can catch the streetcar. We've been building this thing for the last couple of years. We're hoping that by the time you get here, there is a streetcar.